If you're an indie musician trying to build a following and to make some money from your music, you probably think you need to say yes to every gig that comes your way. It's easy to say yes to a gig just to get something on your calendar and feel like you're making progress. Even if you're not excited about the gig, you feel like it's not a good fit or the pay feels insulting. I get it, it's so much easier to say yes than no, especially in the early stages of your career. You don't want to disappoint people or act like you're too good for what they're offering. Logically, it makes sense to say yes when someone gives you an opportunity, right? But have you ever thought about what that opportunity is costing you? As independent musicians, we're told that exposure is key, especially when we're first starting out. In fact, we're taught to think of it as a kind of currency. And we're competing against other musicians who've been conditioned in the same way and think of exposure as currency and so don't ask for the kinds of fees that they really do deserve, which drives down the prices that venues are willing to pay. This exposure as currency effect floods the market with a ton of undesirable gigs. And if we say yes to them, then we'll have a lot less time to get more gigs that are a better fit and that will pay us what we're worth. If we fill up our calendar with these undesirable gigs, we'll be too busy to up-level our game by making better contacts, pursuing better gigs, and actually being able to focus on things that are gonna move our career forward. It's a vicious cycle. And the gigs that you do get will be exhausting and unfulfilling. You'll probably start to resent even having to do them. Do you think that this will have a negative effect on your whole career outlook? The negative energy created by resentment and burnout will definitely not help you get more high level gigs. In fact, it will repel them. Have you ever noticed that when somebody applies for a job who already has a job, they're much more likely to get hired? That's because they can approach the interview with much more confidence and poise because they know they already have a job, that a reputable employer has already hired them, and they don't need this job. So they don't come off as desperate, and that is much more attractive. On the other hand, a job applicant who's been out of work or who works a low paying job or multiple jobs is likely to come across as resentful, negative, and desperate. When they give off this vibe, they become undesirable, even if they're just as talented as the other applicant. It's not right or wrong, it's just human nature. In the same way, once you've been paid a certain fee for a gig, it's much easier to ask for that amount again. The first time that I was paid $1,000 for a gig, I started thinking of myself in a totally different league. I was finally able to say no to gigs that were free or low paying. I had the backbone to not accept gigs that didn't serve me. Now I'm not saying that you should never take free or low paying gigs, especially in the beginning. We've all been there. But you've got to be strategic. You need to know your why for every yes that you give to a gig. You need to know that that gig is going to serve you in some way. And you need to know the opportunity cost for taking that gig. The opportunity cost of time and energy that that gig is gonna cost you. And if that works for you, then take that gig. But just remember that every no that you say for the wrong gig is an invitation for the right gig to come along. The next step is to start approaching venues as an artist who's already being paid what she's worth. Now, if you're not there yet, I'm not telling you to be deceptive. If you truly believe in your talent, you'll know that you're gonna get there. And so you can start showing up as your future self. If you show up right now with the confidence of your future self, then you're gonna attract better gigs. 
If you're wondering what skills you need to start commanding higher fees for your gigs, or what kind of venues you should be approaching based upon what stage of your music career growth that you're in, I cover all this and more in my free masterclass at musiciansprofitpath.com. It's free, so go register right now.